What's good, guys? Dublin Rex here, back with another major kill video, bro. He comes out with so much good videos that like entertaining and the comedy yeah. and from comedy from it yeah. as well. Today we're looking at who is the best Space Marine for from each, each Legion, guys. So before we get into this video, guys, please hit that subscribe button if you're new. Hit that like button if you enjoy the videos and want to see more mm -hmm. videos like this one. And if you got any more videos, guys, to request, please put them in the comments below and we'll get to them, guys. Also hit that notification, guys. Keep you updated when we come out videos. Also, guys, hit that share button. Follow us on Twitter for more updates on our channel. Without further ado, guys, let's get into the video. Gal, despite how awe-inspiring the Primarchs are, how goddamn sexy the Custodes are, and how much I want an Eldar mummy to crush me with their muscly thunder thighs, it's no secret that the Space Marines are the creme de la creme of Warhammer. They yep. sell the most minis, they have the most lore, they have the most characters, if you tell someone you like Warhammer, they'll probably say, what the fuck is that? If you tell someone you like to go pew pew with your little plastic space marines, <laughs> they'll probably go, oh yeah, I've seen those before, before giving you one of those looks of like, worry and disgust. There are so many awesome space marine characters that it's literally impossible to say which one is the best. However, I've been able to come up with the top 18, choosing the best Space Marines from each Legion. Before we get started, massive shout out to Grandmaster Cal for his incredible paint job of the Shark Daddy. That is nice Mini. right there. The paint scheme, cheeky kit bashing, yeah. overall vibe is a uh, mmm, yeah boy. <laughs> the Shark Daddy, as well as over a dozen very awesome minis, in my biased opinion, can be found on the Major Kill website at majorkill.com. Ships worldwide, all prices in Australian dollars, and I'm keen to soon unveil the next mini that's on its way. Today we'll go through each Legion, picking out the best Space Marine from each. I'll be judging them based on their impact on the Legion, how liked they are by the fans, how impressive they are, as well as um, my own expert opinion. <laughs> Let's get into it. Starting off with the Dark Angels, because they are the first Legion and these lists are a lot easier to go through when I'm not counting like a spaz. Right. There are a few strong contenders here, but Cypher stands out above the rest. Mostly because he has been able to string along, fuck around, and downright prank the Dark Angels for over 10,000 years, which is hilarious. His loyalty is also unclear, which adds a sense of mystery about the character. On one hand, he is without a doubt a heretic, joining the Fallen and using Chaos to further his own convoluted agenda. Oh. On the other hand, he saved Gilliman's life and was a key aspect on getting him to Terra, so he could take up the mantle of Lord Regent of the Imperium and save everyone's shit. That's right. Cypher saved the Imperium, so yeah, like you can't give him too much shit about that, eh? The Fallen Dark Angels are a cool concept. Angels who were loyal to the Emperor and attacked the Lion because they were manipulated into thinking he was a traitor. However, GW keeps squandering them, making them fall to chaos and become Chaos Lords, even though that is the opposite of their original purpose. I know, right? However, Cypher maintains the true renegade, yet ultimately loyalist vibe of the Fallen, a concept which time and time again has shown to be extremely interesting. The second Legion's best space marine is Anthony Albanese, the new Prime Minister of Australia who was able to finally rid us of a decade of dog shit corrupt fuckwit politicians. The Empress Children is an interesting okay. one. You couldn't really be blamed for choosing Fabius Bile because of his impact and unique perspective of the galaxy, until you remember that Rylanor exists. I'm sorry, well not actually sorry, but Rylanor just automatically trumps all the others for the virtue of kicking his arsehole fuckhead father and his many sets of testicles. If you don't know who Rylanor is, then you're a worthless piece of <clears throat> then allow me to educate. He was a loyalist dreadnought who was one of the only survivors of the Istvan atrocity, where the traitor legion sent their loyalist members to be killed in mass. He survived a nuclear bombing, followed by a war, followed by another nuclear bombing. And he survived everything. He obviously everything. wasn't in great shape by the end of this. However, he put together another nuke and then broadcast a signal to his traitor father to come see him. Some thousand sons went to see what was up and Fulgrim came as well. Rylanor doesn't waste time taunting or monologuing. As soon as he sees Fulgrim, he tries to Allah Akbar that shit, but the Thousand Suns block the bomb detonation with their space wizardry. Fulgrim then taunts Rylanor, basically threatening to rape the shit out of him. However, Rylanor remains defiant. The traitorous, heretic oh, Thousand bro. Suns were so moved by- This though, that story, that story just everywhere. <laughs> The first time I like, I'm trying to kill him, then he threatened the Okay, bro. The Rylanor's spirit and will that they decided to let the bomb go off, killing themselves in the process, as well as permanently damaging the immortal Fulgrim's pride. It's thought that Rylanor's last stand against Fulgrim is what has kept Fulgrim out of the setting for so long. 
badass. Hmm. For the Iron Warriors, it'd be easy to give it to Dantioch the Legend and call it a day. But Warsmith Honsu takes the cake. This is the psycho known for creating the Demonculilaba, and he waged a war against Ultramar that actually had the boys in blue sweating. He rose from rock bottom, being looked down on for having a mix of Imperial Fist and Iron Warrior Gene Seed. Yet despite this, he rose in the ranks to eventually become a Warsmith commanding a large Iron Warrior army and even enthralling demon princes to his cause. It's because of Warsmith Honsu that you have heard he of looks... Muriel Ventress. The <laughs> White Scars are a pretty warrior. shafted legion, having very little lore despite an amazing Primarch. Probably something to do with their pain in the ass paint scheme. However, Jubal Khan is the no, clear frontrunner for the best of their space marines. Mm, he is. was awesome, declining multiple promotional offers from Jagadai Khan so he could keep killing people in melee combat on the <laughs> front lines using a power guando, which is fucking sick. He became the first master of the hunt, a role that was given to special White Scar warriors who would go out and kill a single target that the White Scars hated. This put him in a direct confrontation with Abaddon, and sadly, it ended in Jubal's death. But his legacy lives on as the tradition of the Master of the Hunt remains to this day. Hmm. As an extra note, Jubal was like extremely to close to beating Sigismund in an honor duel, having to forfeit because he got too injured, know, right? with up. Sigismund barely doing any better. Onto the Space Wolves. Legends have come and legends have gone. Whilst I nearly gave this to Bjorn the Fell Handed for obvious reasons, the younger Logan Grimnar takes the cake. Logan is just on another level to other Space Marines. Yeah, we heard about Magnus him has fought that. against a number of Space Marine chapter masters and he's killed most of them. Logan was the first to actually beat Magnus in a melee fight and live to speak of it. He is capable of sprinting in Terminator armor, something that was previously considered impossible, and he uses an extremely heretical Cornite battle axe without getting mm -hmm. corrupted in the slightest. It's likely Korn already considers him a beast and doesn't feel the need to exert his influence on him. It's easy to forget that the Space Wolves under Logan are only one chapter, considering how much of an impact Daddy Wolf seems to have on the setting. He's also surprisingly level-headed, seeing the Primaris as an asset rather than the threat that numerous Space Wolves thought. Overall, a great leader and an even better character. For right, the right. Fist, there, there character. can only be one. Sigismund, the greatest Astartes warrior to ever live. I literally made an entire video about why Sigismund is an absolute beast, hmm. but it basically boils down to the fact that he can and will kill everyone. If there was a Doom Slayer of 40k, it's Sigismund. Like it. like a lot of people say it's actually Khan, but Sigismund fucking killed Khan. Khan is like, evil Doom Slayer. Sigismund's character arc, from respected warrior who simps through his father, to the cold and ruthless Lord of the Black <laughs> Templars was an awesome one to follow. Hmm. By the time the Siege of Terror occurred, his only task was to hunt down and kill as many Chaos Champions as he could. Yeah. And holy shit, <laughs> and the man man you get, it wasn't get, just uh, like, oh, and he- Tasked with that duty of killing, from, uh, killing Chaos Champions. I know, right? He went off and killed 1,000 Chaos Lords. No, like, he was killing named characters. Characters that had their own chapters in their books. Dang. Post the heresy, he would go on to found the legendary Black Templars, who to this day remain mm. one of the most powerful, if not fucking insane chapters in the Jeez. galaxy. He's I wouldn't say steadfast though. Recent lore has some of them going cuckoo and killing their Primaris reinforcements. Well, they'll do it. But I guess that's what happens when you weaponize autism. Double-edged sword. Right. After learning more about them, I have really fallen in love with the Night Lords. Their regality and nobility, conflicting with their savage nature, creates an amazing aesthetic. So it probably comes as no surprise that the best Night Lord, that being Sevatar, was the only ever space marine to beat Prime Sigismund in a duel. And in typical Night Lord fashion, it was by cheating. Sevatar is autistic, <laughs> not in a haha smacks his ears cause loud noises trigger his tics, but the super focused yet abysmally shit at social situations autism. This ironically not culminated not in him being extremely well liked. He gave zero- Really though? <laughs> Zero Fox was oh, honest not, and a legendary no, fighter, alone. three very admirable traits in Space Marines. Because he wasn't focusing on all the petty backstabbing and social climbing that his brothers were doing, he naturally rose to the top. By the end of Conrad Curse's Bro, life, he only liked like Looks three sick. of his Night Lord's sons. The chief amongst those was Sevatar. By the time Conrad had well and truly lost his marvels, Sevatar was the de facto Primarch, and his alleged death signaled the beginning of the end of the Legion. You know when you wake up sometimes and all you think is, holy fuck, I'm over 1,000 years old and tired as shit, I just want to fucking die, but apparently that's the fate what of the Imperium up. rests on my shoulders, so I'm not allowed to. 
No, well, Dante thinks that every morning. Right, bro. This legendary Blood Angels has served for around 1,500 years, being one of the oldest loyalist space marines to ever Video exist. Video coming He's a legendary there, warrior, bro. overcoming many foes, including the Swarm Lord, whilst also being an incredible commander, universally respected. He embodies the nobility that Sanguinius hoped for his sons, actively directing them away from their natural savagery. Dante has even been able to resist the Red Thirst, allowing his body to age instead of giving in to his selfish desires. That's crazy, Due to being bro. such an all-round dude, Gilliman has made him the protector of Imperium Nilius, which is like half the galaxy. Dante accepted, but now he wakes up thinking, holy fuck, I just want to die, but now I'm the protector of the side of the galaxy <laughs> that is getting mega raped but by Nina. But he's dying if he don't drink blood, Oof. so... The well, Iron nah, Man's really you know, Primar uh, well, not, for Space Marines age slower than anybody else. And considering how oh, hard they've been shafted in the lore, like I genuinely bro. didn't know any Iron Hand characters off the top of my <clears> head. <throat> Even their first captain, Gabriel Santor, was killed at the same time as his Primarch. Fortunately, their current chapter master, Kar Dan Stronos, is a bit of a beast. He has been the longest serving leader of the Iron Hand since Ferris Mattis himself. He's kicked mega ass, flattening Orc Waz, titty slapping Tyranid High Fleets, and bone bonking the Necrons, whom he hates with a passion. This guy isn't all war and party though. A big issue with the Iron Hands is the whole the flesh is weak vibe, which Chaos hmm. actually uses against them. Cardan, on the other hand, believes that by embracing their humanity and mastering their emotions, they can become perfect space marines. I think that sounds pretty wholesome, but it's coming from a dude who looks like a yeah, they, you know, kaiju in half, so they take it with a grain yeah. of salt. The 11th Legion's best space marine has to be Bruce Lee. Firstly, because he's a badass <laughs> warrior legend, <laughs> bro, and secondly, that's what I'm because he's about, dead bro. as fuck. Crazy, the bro. World Eaters is beyond obvious. Khan the Betrayer. Despite being a pretty insane murder machine who is universally seen as a massive asshole, he is the highest melee body count ever, by Dang. far. This dude treats Warhammer 40k like a video game, which is fair enough, a lot of us do too. With a Primarch weapon in one hand, a jacked permanently tensing bicep, and a kill counter in his helmet, this dark rendition of the Doomslayer isn't here to fuck spiders. I made a full video on just how much of a monster he is if you want to learn more. The best Ultramarine is obviously I, Kato Sicarius! <laughs> no, not really, although Kato is actually pretty cool in the current lore. Now the real big blue boy has to be Marnius Kalgar. I'm not the biggest Marnius fan. I think he's a bit overpowered and that GW missed an opportunity oh, no, to kill him off yet. soon after Gilliman's resurrection. But you can't deny the man is effective. Whether it be by punching avatars of Cain to death, punching the Swarmlord to death, or punching Demon Princess to death, yeah, punching everybody the man loves punching, deal. and he has a big fucking fist for it. His biggest dub, though, was allowing Elder, a living saint, an inquisitor, and a big-ass mechanical hentai monster to go fondle Gilliman's corpse until he came back to life. A lot of chapter masters would have said, get fucked, no, you can't molest my dad's corpse, but Kalgar's open-mindedness literally saved the galaxy, so... You go, big punchy blue man. <laughs> Typhus definitely had the biggest impact on the Death Guard, pretty much single-handedly selling the entire Legion's soul to Nurgle. But fuck Typhus. Nathaniel Garo is the best Death Guard Astartes and is one of the people responsible for the Imperium's victory over Chaos during the Horus Heresy. This is because Nathaniel was one of the Space Marines who discovered that the traitors were about to bomb Istvan, killing all the Loyalist elements in their legions. He allowed Sol Tarvitz to go to the planet's surface and warn them of the imminent virus bomb, directly disobeying the order to shoot him. Garo then escaped, being the one to warn the Imperium about Horus's treachery. If it wasn't for him, Horus would have had plenty more time to prepare and weaken the Loyalists mm, before playing his plenty, bro. From there, Garo went god mode, oh, yeah. becoming the personal knight of Malkador. The dude literally wielded space Excalibur, massacring the he traitors, did? and he helped found the Grey Knights of which he didn't join because Malkador needed him to keep kicking ass. It was Garo who defeated and nearly killed Abaddon during the Siege of Terra, with Abby being teleported to safety at the last second, literally as Garo's killing blow was about to land. He represented the resilience and tenacity of the Death Guard, showing what they could have been like if they didn't all end up stinking like shit. The Thousand Suns choice is pretty obvious. Azak Araman. This dude is a slut for knowledge. Fucking loves it. Unfortunately, he loves it too much. Attempting rituals and spells well beyond oh, his he understanding don't or ability. He's the type of person to try to gain so much knowledge, it's not yeah. for his own good. Yeah. <laughs> for example, to try cure the flesh change in his legion, he performed a ritual that empowered all their psychers, uh, but turned all their non psychers studies. Everybody that turned to chaos, basically, whatever. To dust. Mm, Hence I the guess. existence of Rubik Marines. He has also been desperately trying to access the Black Library with limited success. 
Even though he is in open rebellion against Titsnitch, seeking ways to regain control of his destiny, the changer of ways thinks he's super entertaining, so he allows him to keep doing his whack shit without turning him into a chaos spawn. Also, Aroman's armor is fucking dope, like wow. For the Sons of Horus, I can see why people would instantly just say Abaddon because he's the one of the big bads of the setting. But if you've been watching this channel for a while, you are probably aware that I reckon Abaddon is a bit overrated and poorly written. A son of Horus, or more accurately, a lunar wolf, who isn't a shithead however, is Garviel Loken. Garviel was one of the two loyalists who survived the Isfan atrocity, with the other one being Rylanor. The, the war drove him insane however, <laughs> causing him to wander the wastelands, killing his own comrades who would come back to life via a chaos zombie plague. Man, they gotta be hard Nathaniel to Garo visited him and brought him back to sanity, allowing him to become one of the coolest characters in the entire heresy. This also gave us an extremely badass revenge plot, as he made it his life's work to hunt down and kill the leaders of the Sons of Horus, achieving quite a lot of success, but obviously not enough with Abby still kicking around. Also, Garviel is considered hot for a space marine, so do with that knowledge what you will. <laughs> I'm not the biggest word bearers fan. Lorga is a fanatic, Erebus is a piece of shit, and Corferion is a pedophile. However, I was oh, man, they got issues over here. this dude merged with a demon and became the equivalent of 40k's venom. Their symbiotic mm. possession was considered the perfect specimen of chaos by Lorgar. Neither side dominating the other, but becoming powerful through mutual cooperation. Despite the demon in him, Argul remained a solid dude, not becoming a sadistic monster like most of his brothers. Argul was the only thing keeping Khan mentally sane, and he was the only word bearer that the Custodes actually liked, which made it even more brutal when he betrayed and killed them. Argul wasn't mm. a good guy, he was evil, but he wasn't this piece of shit mustache twirling villain. Chaos needs more Argul's, it's just a shame that Erebus keeps killing them all. <laughs> the Salamanders are known for their kindness and respect for basic humans, so it was this one moment that made Tushan the best out of the lot. A marine's malevolent captain ordered the bombing of a human hospital full of injured to kill some orcs, as he couldn't be fucked protecting it the good old fashioned way. Tushan learnt of this right, and he that's crazy. the captain's quarters. He then said, Put on your gauntlets, I'm about to beat the ever-living shit out of you. And he did just that. Tushan smacked this captain to the moon and back. Sure, the salamanders are cuddly, but if you fuck with the shit they like to cuddle, you're in a bad time, my friend. Hmm. The Raven Guard are another chapter that just isn't front and center, despite a cool Primark and a unique approach I know, to know, right? Well. However, Nakona Sharokin makes me moist, and is the best they got. Firstly, he was really good at wraith slipping, which is a rare ability unique to the Raven Guard that lets them somewhat emulate their Primarch's invisibility. He was then hey. personally trained in combat by Corvus, which is probably why he was the first dude to ever kill Lucius the Eternal. As he killed the cursed swordsman, he reflected that it was like killing a rabid dog. No pride, only a miserable job that needed doing. Dang. As he didn't enjoy your pride Imagine. in it, Lucius was unable to reincarnate through Sharokin and instead needed Slanesh to directly revive him. It's likely that Sharokin killing Lucius without pride or ego is what gave Slanesh the idea to give Lucius his bullshit resurrection ability. Sharokin would go on to wage guerrilla warfare on the traitors, causing quite big events to take place or be denied. If it wasn't for Sharokin, Perturabo would be dead. And finally, the Alpha Legion. Fuck me, man, I don't know. They all call themselves Alpharius, and it's not like we get to see their <laughs> they always last. Whenever one of them does something cool, it's impossible to know if it's them, their mate disguises them, or literally Alpharius, who is probably so a they all gun, say they could too. be Alpharius. So, yeah, I guess Alpharius is their best of starties. If you enjoyed the video, <laughs> the channel, then Patreon is the bro, place to be. Major well, Kill, all... Bro, Major Kill, bro, got the best videos of comedy and to make understand Warhammer in a simple way, bro, with adding comedy to it, bro. So, guys, uh, what do you think? Which one of your, which one of the best? Mine got to be the last one. That was, he, he was the, he the best Space Marine. What, Alpharius? No, no, not the last one, the second of the crowd of the Raven Guard. I don't know. Yeah, that was mine. So, uh, let us know in the comments which one are, or, what's your best one, uh, so let us know in the comments. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you're new. Hit that like button. Hit that notification, guys. Uh, also, hit that uh, share button, guys. Follow us on Twitter for more updates, guys. And we see you guys in the next video. Peace.